Anyone that tells you you can't multitask, tell them they're wrong. And if they disagree with you, tell them to contact me. Because in old world primates, of which humans are, we are able to do what's called covert attention. You can split your attention into two locations, but of course you can also bring your attention, that is your perception, to one particular location. You can dilate your attention, kind of like making a spotlight more diffuse, or you can make it more concentrated. We can place a spotlight of attention on something, for instance, something we're reading or looking at, or someone that we're listening to, and we can place a second spotlight of attention on something we're eating and how it tastes or our child running around in the room, or my dog. This is very important to understand if you're gonna think about tools to improve your nervous system, whether or not that tool is in the form of a chemical that you decide to take, a brain machine device, or you're going to try and learn something better by uh, engaging in some focus or motivated pursuit for some period of time each day. While sensation is not negotiable, You can't change your receptors unless you adopt some new technology. Perception is under the control of your attention. And you can do this right now. You can experience perception and the difference between perception and sensation very easily. If, for instance, I tell you to pay attention to the contact of your feet, the bottoms of your feet with whatever surface they happen to be in contact with, the moment you place your what we call the spotlight of attention or the spotlight of perception on your feet, you are now perceiving what was happening there, what was being sensed there. The sensation was happening all along, however. So we have sensation. Then we have perception. Perception is our ability to take what we're sensing and focus on it and make sense of it, to explore it, to remember it. So really perceptions are just whichever sensations we happen to be paying attention to at any moment. Attention is something that is absolutely under your control, in particular when you're rested. And that's because we have something in our nervous system which is sort of like a two-way street. And that two-way street is a communication between the aspects of our nervous system that are reflexive and the aspects of our nervous system that are deliberate. The nervous system can be reflexive in its action or it can be deliberate. And that's because your nervous system basically wired up to be able to do most things easily without much metabolic demand, without consuming much energy. But the moment you try and do something very specific, it's going to, you're going to feel a sort of mental friction. If you already know how to walk, you don't think about your walking, you just walk. And that's because the nervous system wants to pass off as much as it can to reflexive action. That's called a bottom-up processing. But at any moment, for instance, let's say a car screeches in front of you around the corner and you suddenly pause, you are now moving into deliberate action. You would start looking around in a very deliberate way. If reflexive action tends to be what we call bottom-up, deliberate action and deliberate perceptions and deliberate thoughts are top-down. They require some effort and some focus, but that's the point. You can decide to focus your attention and energy on anything you want. Actions or behaviors are perhaps the most important aspect to our nervous system because, first of all, our behaviors are actually the only thing that are going to create any fossil record of our existence. The sensations, the perceptions, and the thoughts, and the feelings that we have in our lifespan None of that is actually carried forward except the ones that we take and we convert into actions such as writing, actions such as words, actions such as engineering new things. And that in part is why so much of our nervous system is devoted to converting sensation, perceptions, feelings, and thoughts into actions. The other way to think about it is that one of the reasons that our central nervous system, our brain and spinal cord, include this stuff in our skull, but also connect so heavily to the body is because most everything that we experience, including our thoughts and feelings, was really designed to either impact our behavior or not. And the fact that thoughts allow us to reach into the past and anticipate the future and not just experience what's happening in the moment gave rise to an incredible capacity for us to engage in behaviors that are not just for the moment. They're based on things that we know from the past and that we would like to see in the future. What does it mean for the nervous system to do something deliberately? In this, what I call DPO, duration path outcome, type of deliberate function in your brain and nervous system. When you do something deliberately, you pay attention, you are bringing your perception to an analysis of three things. 
duration, how long something is going to take or should be done, path, what you should be doing, and outcome. If you do something for a given length of time, what's going to happen? engage in this duration path and outcome type of uh, thinking or behavior or way of being, you start to recruit these neuromodulators that are released from particular areas of your brain and also it turns out from your body and they start cueing to your nervous system, something's different, something's different now about what I'm doing. This it feels like agitation and stress because you're actually suppressing a circuit. But the moment you decide to learn something or to resist speaking, or to speak up when you would rather be quiet. Anytime you're deliberately forcing yourself over a threshold, you're engaging these brain circuits and these nervous system circuits. We actually can see examples of what happens when you're not doing this well. Uh, some of the examples uh, come from children. If you look at young children, they don't have the four brain circuitry to engage in this top-down processing. You'll see they'll be rocking back and forth. It's hard for them to sit still because those central pattern generators are constantly going in the background, whereas adults can sit still. A kid sees a piece of candy that it wants and will just reach out and grab it, whereas an adult probably would ask if they could have a piece or wait until they were offered a piece in most cases. Impulsivity is a lack of top-down control, a lack of top-down processing. The other thing that will turn off the forebrain and make it harder to top-down processing is a couple of uh, drinks containing alcohol. Well, the, the removal of inhibition is actually a removal of neural inhibition of nerve cells suppressing the activity of, the, of other nerve cells. So a lot of the motor system is designed to just work in a reflexive way. And then when we decide we want to learn something or do something or not, We have to engage in this top-down restriction. If you want to understand neural plasticity, you want to understand how to shape your behavior, how to shape your thinking, how to change how you're able to perform in any context. And that brings us to the next thing, which are thoughts. Thoughts are really interesting because in many ways they're like perceptions, except that they draw on not just what's happening in the present, but also things we remember from the past and things that we anticipate about the future. Thoughts can be both reflexive, they can just be occurring all the time, sort of like pop-up windows on a poorly filtered web browser, or they can be deliberate. We can decide to have a thought. In fact, right now you could decide to have a thought just like you would decide to write something out on a piece of paper. The reflexive pathway basically includes areas of the brainstem we call central pattern generators, groups of neurons that generate right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot kind of movement. However, when you decide to move in a particular deliberate way that requires a little more attention, you start to engage 
areas of your brain for top-down processing where your forebrain works from the top down to control those central pattern generators. And a lot of people don't understand or at least appreciate that the thought patterns and the neural circuits that underlie thoughts can actually be controlled in this deliberate way. You're not just paying attention to what's happening, you're directing your thought process.